Good evening, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I am so excited about tonight's show. So turn up the volume and let's get started. As you know, the month of October is always our season of revival. Each week, we are blessed by what is called Wednesdays in the Word. Last week, we heard from Dr. Otis Moss III, Senior Pastor of Trinity United Church of Christ in Chicago, Illinois. And tomorrow, we will be ministered to by Dr. Gina Marcia Stewart, Senior Pastor of the Christ Missionary Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee. We hope you will tune in and worship with us via Facebook, YouTube, our website, or our media app. Here on The Avenue, we figured we'd keep the theme of revival going. So this evening's entire show will be about the different ways we can revive not only our souls, but our bodies and minds as well. Last week, Pastor came by to share the plans for our church as we head back to in-person worship. While many members have stayed in contact with their respective ministries, there are some members who may have gotten out of touch as life took us through such drastic changes. When we're back together, it is our prayer that everyone finds a ministry that fits. But for some people, it is easier said than done. Fortunately, we have on our website a spiritual gifts survey. The Bible says in 1 Peter that we are to use whatever gifts we have received to serve others. So, on the Get Involved page, you'll see a spiritual gifts survey tab, which will take you to a page that will prayerfully help you better understand yourself and where your gifts will be best utilized in God's house and in everyday life. As we make our way back to the church campus, we want everyone to know that there is a place for them to use their gifts in a way that will enrich and enhance Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church and the community we serve. When it comes to community, one thing that people are speaking up more about now is mental health. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, also known as NAMI, People with depression have a 40% higher risk of developing cardiovascular and metabolic diseases. High school students with significant symptoms of depression are more than twice as likely to drop out compared to their peers. And students between the ages of 6 and 17 with mental, emotional, or behavioral concerns are three times more likely to repeat a grade. This is an issue that is affecting most age groups. And the more we talk about it, the more comfortable people are with sharing how they are feeling and getting the help that they need. Here to speak with us on how we can keep our minds healthy is two-time best-selling author, ADHD expert, founder of three companies, podcaster, media influencer, and double board certified child, adult, and sports psychiatrist, Dr. Don Brown. Dr. Don, thank you so much for being here. How are you this evening? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me, Adrian. It's a blessing to be here. Of course. Well, we're talking about mental health, and we hear it being talked about everywhere now, all the time. Um, but things like depression and anxiety are still such great issues in our community. Why do you think some people are still suffering in silence? Well, I think this pandemic has uncovered a great deal of mental health issues that we've been experiencing for a long time. Um, we're not designed to hibernate, and so I think that um, mental health has become in the forefront, which is a good thing. And people are actually having these important conversations about their wellness. And so I think the, the, the pandemic has been a blessing in, in that sense. Yeah. So outside of depression and anxiety, what are some of the other issues that you're starting to see or that you've been seeing? Yes, that's a great question. Alcoholism, unfortunately, has increased um, social skills has actually um, been a problem, particularly for kids who've actually had to stay home. And so there was a little bit of regression in that area. Um, 
stress overall. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you look at anxiety, it can be a part of stress, but stress as far as financial stress, social stressors, work stress, um, the demands um, that is placed on individuals to adjust and adapt to new environments and situations demands has been an issue as well. ADHD, my actually, my actual, um, uh, I would say subspecialty has actually been on the rise because people can't focus, they can't yeah. concentrate. And so that's become an, a, a more of a um, awareness that people are getting evaluated for as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of children, I've recently heard people talking about the possibility of maybe children or schools allowing children mental health days. What is your take on that? I love it. Yeah. I think children and adults should yeah. have their mental health days. I think that um, physical wellness is important. So we have our physical days, summer, mm -hmm. you know, breaks, recess, spring break. Um, but I think that we also need to concentrate on our mental wellness. And so it is important. And I think that people understand how important it is. I mean, kids can't do well if they're constantly going. They're constantly, mm -hmm. you know, learning and trying to um, excel. Um, and so I think that this pandemic has also looked at that. And um, I think it's a great idea that um, kids can really benefit from. Yeah, I think it's good that the focus now is it, people are really recognizing that children deal with mental health issues as well. It's not just adults. And actually, a lot of our trauma starts as children. And so recently I was watching an interview um, and I heard something that kind of stuck with me. Radio personality Charlemagne mm -hmm. from Power 105.1 in New York said that it is okay to not be okay. Deal with your trauma before it deals with you. What are some ways that if we don't deal with it, our trauma, for, even from childhood, will deal with us? Ooh, it's like a baggage. It's like a heavy coat that's dragging you along the trajectory of your life. Wow. Um, distorted goggles that you have on that distort your vision that people can't necessarily see their future. Trauma is actually something that I often see in different populations that I serve, from athletes to children. And it's something that if it's not addressed, it actually can become something different. It can become insomnia, depression, um, decreased self-worth, self-esteem. I've even seen it become you know, suicidal thoughts. Um, and so it is important to recognize trauma. Many individuals are not recognizing what trauma truly is. They think it's their sense of normalcy. And so that's been eye-opening. We've been actually able to increase awareness and educational literacy about trauma and what it can look like for people. And so more and more people are having therapy sessions now. So okay. it's been a little challenging for people to find therapy, but I think that online therapy services has really um, shortened the gap between you know, the lack of access and being able to find these individuals that can help and serve our communities. Do you think the option of online therapy now has kind of taken some of the anxiety out of actually going to a therapist? Because I have friends now who actually do see their therapists virtually, and they, before the pandemic, weren't even going to a therapist. So do you, how do you think that has changed the whole therapy issue? Yes, I, I actually was blessed, Adrian, to um, transform my practice to a virtual practice about seven years ago mm. for ADHD. And I found that it destigmatized the experience for many people. They were able to talk about situations and um, I guess traumatic situations that really impacted them um, associated with ADHD as anxiety and depression and other factors. And so now, I, yes, I love the idea. I think we can reach more people. I think the screen just destigmatizes the experience for people. They're in their mm -hmm. comfort zone yeah. while they're actually able to talk about uncomfortable situations. Um, and ideas and feelings. And so it's really been a huge benefit for individuals. That's awesome. Well, speaking of the pandemic, um, what toll do you think the emotional roller coaster of all of this has taken on our minds and our bodies? Um, you know, things were getting better and then they weren't. We didn't <laughs> want to go home and now we love being at home and kind of don't want to go back into the office or even to church. Um, it's a lot. Is that making things worse, this emotional roller coaster we're on? There's a couple of things about this. I think that some people have realized, that particularly adults have realized, some adults have realized that they work better from home, mm -hmm. um, that that's kind of their comfort zone. They've actually created their space at home and they're able to do more. They're more productive. Their performance has improved or increased, which has been better for business. Yeah. Um, and now that you're asking these adults to go back into work, you know, they're having to readjust, readapt 
change is inevitable. It can create anxiety for anyone, even if it's positive. Um, and so those individuals have done very well at home, not necessarily want to go back to work or the fear of going back to work. You know, how do I speak to people who haven't been vaccinated going back to yeah. work? You know, there's so many factors there, it's particularly with kids. You know, I find that kids, um, particularly those with ADHD, have been doing better at home because they're working on their own pace. Um, they're turning assignments when they're due. They don't necessarily have to catch up with what the teacher's teaching, and so they can actually do that better. Um, but kids in general, when they're not in school, school's a social playground, and so some kids have regressed, and so the social aspect has been very important. So now that I'm seeing kids these past two months, it's been very beneficial. This emotional roller coaster has not necessarily been a great one, especially when we're, you know, we're masked, and then now we have to, you know, go back to school, and then now we have to come back home. Yeah, it's, it can be definitely challenging and stressful. I think that as long as we're open ab about it, and like adults talk to their employer, hey, can we do a hybrid, or kids, you know, find out if their school, if they need to be at school every day. I think we're having these important conversations um, because all around they're seeing how people are benefiting from being in either environment. So it's good to have the openness of the conversations. Nice. Yeah. Well, how can we help ourselves and even others if we recognize that something is not right? Change. If you recognize that there's a change, a change in how you eat, how you sleep, how you communicate with you know, individuals, a change in your mindset, how you're thinking, that is actually the number one indicator that I actually educate my patients about. If it's not your normal, then something may not be right. And so have a conversation with someone that you are close to. It can start with a family member, it can start with a loved one, a coworker. Um, but we would love to see you. You know, mental health providers are available. We're accessible. We're more accessible now than we've ever been. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's important. Um, you know, church, of course, church family members are very, very instrumental in, um, you know, having those conversations. And if it's, you know, something that they feel they cannot necessarily help, you know, they can help guide and lead them to other um, individuals such as us or someone else that can be helpful to the situation. Um, so having the conversation is important, but understand that everyone's on a mental health spectrum. It's a continuum. Not everyone has mental illness, but everyone has mental health. Yes. So we want to range that to poor to good mental health. And so rate yourself. What does your mental health look like, right? And then I look at the biological, the psychological, the social factors when we consider that. That's good. Um, so what are some other resources available to those who are ready to seek help and how can we connect with you? Yeah, so you feel free to connect with me at drdawnpsychmd.com. That's D-R-D-A-W-N-P-S-Y-C-H-M-D.com. But I, I, I recommend that people start with their, like, their primary care doctor. I think that's a really good start because most people feel comfortable with that individual, and then that individual can connect to us. But we are, I mean, Google search, mental yeah. health, your zip code. It brings up a list of people in your area, um, psychologytoday.com, um, insurance, you know, ask for a referral list for mental health professionals. It can include a therapist, psychologist, a psychiatrist. We don't care where you start. We would just love to, for you to start so you can actually, you know, get a mental health checkup is what yeah. I call them. I mean, nothing has to be wrong. Just come and see us just like you would your normal doctor for a physical evaluation. Wow, that was great. Well, thank you so much for coming to speak with us on the Avenue this evening. Thanks for having me, Adrienne. Thank you. Dr. Dawn is amazing. I hope that we all take heed to what she shared and do what we can to protect our mental health. It is so important. And now we are heading into the city to sit down with our final guest for the evening, Ms. Kim Roxy of La Meague Beauty, who has been featured in Essence, Women's Health Magazine, Allure, and more. Many of you are familiar with her brand and have used La Meague through the years, and today, we are going into her space to learn about the importance of skin care. As the weather gets cooler, we have to protect all of this precious melanin that God has blessed us with. So listen up as we hear from the expert. We are here with the fabulous Miss Kim Roxy, esthetician, founder, and owner of Lamique Beauty, which specializes in clean color cosmetics for all women. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. How are you? I'm amazing now. <laughs> OMG, I'm with Adrian. 
Oh my goodness. She's funny too, y'all. Okay, we're talking about revival and rejuvenation. Yeah. So one of the things that we've always heard and found to be true is that when you look good, you feel good. Mm -hmm. And for years, you've helped women to do both. Yeah. So how did this passion for beauty begin? My passion for beauty began um, when I was in college and I needed a job and I went to the mall looking for a job and ended up getting hired at this makeup counter, at this little makeup store. And a couple of weeks into the job, my manager came to me and she said, what are you telling these women? And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, you're selling more makeup than me. You're selling more makeup than anybody in the store. What are you saying to these women? And she said, because you don't even do makeup that good. And I was like, you got a point, but uh, I was just like, but I fell in love with making women feel good about themselves. I almost felt like a doctor or a nurse, like just the way that once I got done or talking to them and putting on their makeup or showing them something, how excited they were, how rejuvenated they felt. Um, and so that I fell in love with. I fell in love with being that person to them. And so that got me inside of beauty. It wasn't that I just like love makeup so much because I didn't even grow up like putting on makeup. I really just fell in love with that connection with women that I would get. Right. Well, it has now blossomed into a beautiful brand that is more yes. than makeup. Yes. You've written that Lamique is a health and wellness brand just yeah. as much as it is a beauty company. Um, that's a beautiful statement. What led you to focus on more than just the surface? I know you said you like making women feel good, but your products are clean, vegan products. So mm -hmm. what, what sparked that? Yeah, so we're certified cruelty-free, you know, and really what sparked that was a couple different things. One was, I remember meeting a guy who had a farm and he told me, he said, yeah, I'm selling this <laughs> animal blood uh, to this company. Um, and I said, what, for what? He's like, oh, for cosmetics. And then it's like, like this animal fat, like to cosmetics. I'm like, we putting this inside of makeup? Like, is that what's happening here? And then um, uh, I had my mother, um, passed away from metastatic breast cancer. And I did a lot of research on this. Um, and there's so many documentaries that talk about it. But just putting ourselves at risk to parabens and talc, 75% um, of beauty products marketed to women that look like us, Adrian, are toxic. 75% wow. of beauty products marketed to women of color are toxic. And you know, sometimes I just be like, they don't care about us. You know, like we gotta care about ourselves. And that's the reason why we're creating this. So we make our products here in Houston, on the north side of Houston. Um, and I have a statement that really ties into what we're talking about. It says, beauty is revealed, not applied. And it's not so much that we're gonna make you beautiful. We're actually just revealing, and even in our ingredients, we're revealing what's best for you to use. I was just about to bring up that <laughs> statement. So I'm, I'm glad that you said that. How can we reveal our beauty? Yeah, we can reveal our beauty uh, by being honest. You know, we're honest as a company in regards to what we're using. So then you can make the best choices. You can be honest with yourself. Um, you can reveal your beauty by not holding back. Like really, what you have is a gift. What you look like is a gift. You know, it's not about me and you looking just alike, right? It's not about that. It's not about us even trying uh, to be that. It's about you revealing who you are. So when you show up in the world, there's another girl, another woman that sees you or hears your story and sees themselves. Nice. Um, and we all have the power uh, to uplift and to elevate and to validate each other. Okay, so speaking of all women just looking different and having different versions of beauty. Yes. You all have been keeping bu keeping busy in this virtual situation mm -hmm. that we're in now. Uh -huh. What are some of the ways that you've utilized augmented reality for those women of different shapes and yes. beauty? Yes, yes. So um, this is the part that um, if I can bring it, you know, I have to bring it to church for a second. Go ahead. Because, you know, when God show up in your life, you got to tell somebody. Yes. <laughs> you got to tell somebody. So let me tell you, I ran my own makeup store in Houston for 14 years. Um, and inside of that store, you've been there before, mm -hmm. and your family and all of that. But so many women have. And I started that store when I was 21. Um, so plenty of women in this city have, have kept 
that a lot and we did that and so I was a small business owner and I was excited about that but up in 2018 I really felt this huge shift in my spirit um, to go towards e-commerce and make it easier for women to buy makeup online than in person and do not ask me why I felt like I should be building this online beauty business. And so I closed my store, but I just felt this move. And anybody out there listening, you might have heard that voice before who told you to make a move, but you couldn't see the rest of the vision. You just said, oh, make a move, right? And so I, um, in 2018, closed the store, started building on this e-commerce online beauty business. And at the end of 2019, I secured a partnership with the augmented reality company that we would be the first black owned uh, beauty brand to allow our customers to try on, for instance, the brow kit, the brow duo, on their brows to see it show up on their skin tone. Um, and I would be ready for 2020. And so I was like, okay, we're gonna launch at South by Southwest in March of 2020. This is gonna be so exciting. And then the pandemic hit, but that didn't affect anything we did. Yeah. Because we, it was pandemic proof. This is COVID proof, a way you can try on makeup. Because if you go in stores right now, you can't try on any makeup. Wow. And so this was a way you could try on makeup. And I was like, so God, you you set up this whole situation. Come on and testify, okay? <laughs> so let me tell you, when God tell you to move, baby, you better move. When you hear that voice, you better attend and be attentive and obey. Um, because there could be a pandemic coming. And you could be positioned for it and be ready. And uh, that's that's pretty much what happened. So now women are, you know, trying on their makeup, makeup virtually to get the right products from Lameek on our website. Beautiful, beautiful story. Yeah. Um, well, you've been featured all over, but recently I saw you showing off some fire dance moves <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> As you opened a package from Ulta yes. and also in front of Ulta, you had background, y'all, she had background dancers and everything. Um, what are they selling now that has you so excited? Well, you know, I'm so excited, Adrian, because let me say this, um, because we're talking about all the amazing things that, I'm, that, that we're doing. But but let me, let, me, let me just put a pin here. I was kicked out of high school at 16. So let's put a pin right there. So just imagine if I was kicked out of high school at 16 and I got the grace to rebound in my life, why wouldn't I be dancing, okay? Why wouldn't I be moving? And so when I, uh, when the products landed on Ulta.com, this is the largest specialty beauty retailer in the country. And we are the first black owned clean beauty brand meaning, you know, certified vegan, certified cruelty free, using clean ingredients on their site, okay? So we're making her story right now. And when I went on there, I ordered something for myself. Cause I was like, I gotta order. I gotta just see what this feel like. And when I got my package in the mail, oh, <laughs> That's the move, that's the one, that's right? <laughs> that's the one I had to bust. I had to hit it, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, all I, you know, I still have that 16 year old girl who was kicked out and who was, and when I say kicked out, I mean I was expelled and I had to go to an alternative school and really they wanted to take me to juvenile, but my parents really interceded on my behalf and really advocated for me. Um, and when that all happened, you gotta remember, there's still that 16 year old girl inside of me. So when we say beauty is revealed, again, that 16 year old girl is still looking for her beauty, you understand what I'm saying? And still proving herself. And so that's the part uh, that has me so excited. Wow. So what, what are some of the products that Ulta is selling? Yes. So they're selling our Revelation Brow Duo, uh, which I have on my brows, girl. I cannot leave home without it. And they look great. Thank you. <laughs> um, they're selling our brow gel. Uh, they are selling our mascara, our brow brush, um, and all of those wonderful products. So you can put all this on, put your mask on, okay? Put your mask on and still be fly. Yes, yes. Well, those are all of the prepared questions that I have. So I'm going to stop talking because I hear that you're going to be doing a demo. Yes! 
on me. Exactly. So I'm ready. What are we doing first? Yeah, so we're going to be doing a skincare demo. Um, because what we want to show is how to get prepared. You got the winter months. You got all of these things that are happening. Coming out of summer, how do you try to sort of transition that skin? Um, and so I'm going to show how to remove your makeup properly um, and all of that. And so that aesthetic side of me, that skincare side of me is going to really come out. And I'm excited because you, you, you have to be one of the most beautiful faces. Oh my gosh, Thank you're gorgeous. You. You're gorgeous. So, so we're going to have a good time. Okay, and before we finish this, mm -hmm. where can we find your products other than Ulta? What is yeah, your... so you can go to Ulta.com or you can come to my site. You okay. can go to LamiqueBeauty.com. Make sure you sign up our email list. You need to know what's going on in the Lamique world and we need your support um, and your love. And if you look in your makeup bag and you don't have Lamique in your makeup bag, I mean, what are you doing? Like, how are you living? Like, what's going on? Um, and so, uh, make sure you go to LamiqueBeauty.com as well so you can sign up for our email list and uh, get you some good products. And social media. Um, at Lamique Beauty, yes. Um, Instagram, at Lamique Beauty, really all platforms. Um, we're on there every Friday night. Um, let's say you got a long week. You know what I'm saying? You done worked all week, took care of them kids. I mean, you did all that. <laughs> um, you're studying for school and you need a relief. Join me on Friday nights on Facebook at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on our Lamique Beauty Facebook page. We have the, one of the most livest makeup parties ever online. Mm -hmm. And it's a live tutorial. I show you how to apply products. I do my whole face, but it's with music. The comment section be lit. Okay, um, grab your beverage of choice. I'll be in there with my uh, Julia Juju drinks and I'll be juicing. Everybody be laughing because they be like, how you get all that energy? I'll be like, from this beet juice I just drank it. <laughs> um, so just make sure you, you can tune in on Friday nights at 8 p.m. It's a great way to sort of get a relief from this pandemic. Well, I know what I'll be doing next Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, well, let's get this let's demo get started. It. All right, we've moved. We're in the cleansing station now. So let us know, what are some of these lovely products here that you'll be using? So Adrian, I have the Lamique um, skincare system. It's our three-step system. It's only available on Friday Night Lives, okay. um, where we exclusively sell it, because it's just a capsule collection. Um, but how you get started with taking off your makeup and cleansing your skin, yes, um, is to number one, I'm taking a little hand sanitizer that I have here. Um, and I put it on a paper towel. First of all, you need to clean underneath your nails. Mm, that's good to know. Yeah. And a lot of us, you know, don't do that. And we touch so many things throughout the day. You never know what you're putting on your face. Exactly. And when you, even when you wash your hands, um, and we learned during this pandemic how to really wash our hands. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 you know, even when washing your hands, a lot of times you don't clean underneath your nails. Okay. Okay. And so cleaning underneath your nails is so important because sometimes your skin will break out and you're just thinking, oh, I'm getting a breakout. You could actually be taking the bacteria from underneath your nails mm -hmm. and just putting it right onto the skin. Um, especially if you wear longer nails, it's even more ways for it to get trapped in there. Um, so always go through and sort of clean underneath your nails and make sure that's good. So before I touch Adrian's lovely face, I have to make sure <laughs> My nails are cleaned underneath. So now they're nice and clean. Now I can actually take and cleanse your skin. Do that even for yourself, okay? okay. All right, so next I'm gonna take a little bit of the cleanser here, um, and I'm going to put just a dime size of that in my hand. Um, so that's about how much you need for the entire face, okay? So it's not a lot. This bottle should last you a whole year. Okay, not three months, but a year. And as you can see, these are all Lamique products. By yes, the way. this is as all Lamique. They're yes. purchased on Friday night. On Friday night lives. And so then you just rub it and you get a nice little foam oh, going wow. on. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take. And this is for makeup and you know any excess dirt that may have mm -hmm. skin oil yep it's going to get all the dirt off this is going to get all of the makeup this is going to get the debris this is going to get everything you came in contact with 
And this is especially important before bed because you know some people go to sleep with their makeup on. Ooh, but fall asleep with our makeup on, don't we? You're Lord putting that all on your pillow, yeah. everything that you've exposed you, yourself to throughout the day. I, and, and you know, I like to always keep it real. I fell asleep with my makeup on, but guess what I have to do? The next morning, to your point, I have to clean my pillows and everything. I gotta yeah. wash my sheets now. So now I just gave myself more of a job. Even though I was being lazy, <laughs> now it's just even more of a, a job I gotta do. So that makes me actually take my makeup off. And what I like to do, uh, because I'm just like anybody else. I'm, I'm, I'm human, just like you. I get tired, mm -hmm. I stayed up, this and that. So what I like to do is, to be honest, have my cleanser right there by my sink. Mm -hmm. And I have two. So I have one by the sink, and then I have one by the shower, because I usually like to cleanse my face in the shower or what have you. Mm -hmm. But again, remember, for those nights that you're pulling those real fast ones, mm -hmm. you're gonna take and just put it right there by the sink, and it's so easy, and then you actually are sleep better. You, you know how you say you, you sleep better when you feel clean? Yes, you know how you like to take a bath yes. And feel better, you know? That's how you're gonna feel after you cleanse your skin. It feels good already. Like, it literally feels like my skin is breathing. Yeah, that kind of refreshed kind of feel. Yeah. Yeah, and then it sort of gets you in that mindset um, because when you think about like mental health and all of that, it's sometimes the smallest things that help you to reset, you know? And kind of removing your makeup at night and everything helps you to reset. And I do recommend cleansing in the morning as well. So even after, you know, you cleanse your skin at night and you take your makeup off, in that, mor that morning again, Adrian, when you get your cleanser, you're gonna take a cleanse again. Okay. Okay. You're gonna cleanse again because there is sebum and all those things that work up on the skin even at night while we're sleeping. Hmm. Good to know. Yeah. So we got a lot of the makeup off. Now I'm gonna take and put the toner on. The toner is there to calm the skin. Mm. Okay. Is there to calm the skin? It's also there to close the pores and get the traces of dirt that the cleanser did not get, okay? okay. So we're gonna take care of that now. So how many steps are there to this process? It's gonna be three steps. Three steps. Yes. Mm. I wish everybody could feel this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I wish y'all could feel it. Yeah, yeah. If y'all were to feel it, you'll see why I'm just relaxing right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're at the spa. Yeah, and that's the thing too. Think about it, and I'm spraying it as well. So just keep in mind that um, the toner has a spray capsule on it um, because the best way I like to do, sometimes I'm gonna show you something. Sometimes you can even take, close your eyes, and even spray the toner. So you just kind of take it, spray it on the skin. Okay, just like that. And then you can take the cotton round and just sort of do it like that. That's also a way that you can apply it, okay? Especially when you want to feel just nice and refreshed, mm -hmm. kind of get that mist going on the face. Mm -hmm. um, this is this is definitely a therapeutic experience. I really clean my skin out of ritual, to be honest. It's almost like committing to yourself that moment of time that you're gonna invest um, in making yourself feel good, yes, but actually caring for that skin, giving you time to think, to sort of uh, detox, to sort of um, debrief with yourself. It's such a ritual. I mean, seriously, it can be very therapeutic to cleanse your skin. So in some of your makeup classes that you do, um, is this included, how to take mm -hmm, off the mm -hmm, makeup and mm -hmm. cleanse the skin? Yep, it sure is, it sure is. And that's why I want you know, everyone to sign up on our website, lamiquebeauty.com, so you'll get the emails and you'll know when we have our classes mm -hmm. and all of that. So the final step is gonna be your moisturizer. Everybody, everybody, everybody needs to moisturize their skin, okay? Everybody. Um, I know they say, and I know it's true, um, that, you know, black don't crack, right? But it can bend, okay? And so, <laughs> so you need to moisturize that skin, even if you have oily skin. And this is the part that I really like to get into. 
um, because this is where I like to do a little facial massage to myself mm -hmm. uh, and a sort of like facial moisture, uh, facial uh, massage, but then also kind of like if I was doing like exercises on my face, you know, mm -hmm. kind of taking and mm, pushing that skin up. Mm. You know, if you're having fine lines on your forehead, kind of take and smooth them out like this. Okay? Okay? All right, kind of do it like that. Take it through. Mm, mm, <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Take and lift it. You can do this to yourself. Take and lift it. Mm, mm, mm. Lift it, lift it, lift it. Take time for yourself. Lift it, lift it, lift it. <laughs> Talk about self-care okay how are we caring for ourselves and remember everything you do to your face you do to your neck okay um, so when you're at home everything I just did do it to your neck too and your decollete okay if you are over the age of 45 if you are over the age of 45 you know who you are I don't care if you don't tell your neighbor I don't care you ain't got to tell your neighbor you know you over 45 okay and if you are over 45 what you need to do is cleanse that neck do everything I did to that neck and to the decollete, okay? Now, for those who don't know what a decollete is, what, that where is that? That is that area right uh, past your neck. So, right above your chest area, okay? okay? Right on that chest area. You need to take and do that. Right on that chest area, okay? Um, just all here. All here. You need to cleanse that skin and tone and moisturize because it's nothing like, you know, you can get we can get a lot of things done to our face to make our face look more youthful. <laughs> and then the neck, you know, not matching up to the face. It gives right? away your age. It gives away. <laughs> See, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll let you say it because I didn't want to get caught saying it because, you know, I had some thoughts about it. Uh, but Adrian is exactly right. The face looking all youthful and your neck telling the truth, right? And so we want to make sure that your neck is right, too. And I just always tell women about that because that's one of those things to where we it's a preventative measure. Okay, for that neck, you gotta prevent that neck from sagging and sort of the elasticity. So continue to work on that area as well. OMG, look at our girl. Oh my gosh, I'm a new woman. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that looks so good. That it looks so good. good. And I'm gonna tell you, this is another thing. Make sure you get around the nose really well with the toner, okay? So I'm gonna go here. Your makeup can get lost in there mm -hmm. too. It gets trapped. <laughs> it gets trapped. And sometimes that's what causes the white heads and the black heads. I was just about to ask about that. Mm -hmm. Good, good to know. So this, these steps can also help with the elimination or the prevention of black heads and white heads. Mm -hmm. kind of. Exactly. So now she's nice and clean. Now she's ready to go to bed. Uh, now she's ready to wake up and put on her makeup, if that was yes. the case. And for the ladies who have oily skin um, and you're like, look, I'm about to put on my makeup. What do I do? I cleanse before I put on my makeup. After you moisturize, you can use it like a liquid powder shine eliminator. And this will take and eliminate the oils um, that sort of come up uh, underneath your makeup. So you're ready. Well, thank you so thank you. much. And your skin looks so good. I mean, it, and it doesn't even look like really flushed and bruised or something yeah. like that. It looks really refreshing. Awesome. Well, I feel refreshed. I hope you guys can take these skincare tips and visit her website, her social media, and make sure you join Friday Night Live to get some of these special <laughs> cleansing products for yourself. OMG. Isn't she awesome? Make sure that you all support her business and do your part at home to take care of your body's largest organ, the skin. As you know, this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so we can't close out the show without sharing a few facts each week about breast cancer, its effects, and how to deal with it. According to the World Health Organization, Breast cancer is the most common cancer among women worldwide, claiming the lives of hundreds of thousands of women each year. Death rates from breast cancer have been declining since about 1990, in part due to better screening and early detection, increased awareness, and continually improving treatment options. According to the National Breast Cancer Foundation Incorporated, although you cannot prevent cancer, 
Some habits that can help reduce your risk are maintaining a healthy weight, staying physically active, eating fruits and vegetables, not smoking, and limiting alcohol consumption. As always, we are celebrating with those who have overcome cancer, and we are praying for those who are currently dealing with breast cancer and those who have lost loved ones. That's all for tonight. Tune in next week as we recognize Fire Safety Month. As always, stay safe and thank you so much for watching. As we count down to being together again physically, you're still on the avenue. Oh,